All right, good morning, everyone. I'm so happy to be coming to you from Hans Bay, about two hours east from Cape Town. And when I knew I had to record this presentation, this was my dream to bring you to this amazing, amazing place in nature, show you the beautiful ocean, show you the sunrise. But then unfortunately it didn't go to plan. So this is what it was like yesterday when I recorded this for you. Hi, good morning. I'm Chantal Pouda. I'm coming to you from so, so clearly you cannot hear what I'm saying. Clearly the wind is howling. And you know what sometimes with our experiences, what a, what a metaphor for the experiences we create. Sometimes it just doesn't go to plan. And what do we do then? We, we improvise. Uh, but what I'd like to start with this morning, uh, and I'm re-recording this piece for you, uh, what I'd like to start with is just the core of my belief about experiences. And I had very early on in my career, uh, I had the fortune of having Lou Carbone as my, as my mentor. And, and Lou taught me that an experience is not about how you feel about a brand. An experience is how you feel about yourself in an interaction with a brand. And that's really, really key for us as experience orchestrators and experience designers to understand that first we need to set our target on how would we like people to feel. And then we need to align all of our actions to that feeling. And very often we uh, get very process orientated, very often we get very mechanical and that's why I so love Lou uh, Len Berry's article about mechanics to humanics. We need to shift. Mechanically we can be very good. The rational part of our brain can really function well, uh, but we need to tap into this deeper, this deeper knowing that there's more to experiences than just a functionally well uh, orchestrated process. So I created this experience-oriented enterprise blueprint to help companies, to help individuals who have the task of transforming their experiences inside their companies. I, I've created that to help them orient. Um, and I'm not saying transform, I'm saying orient, because I think the key to using this blueprint and what I want you to do, you're going to get a copy of this blueprint. Once you get a copy of this blueprint, please go to your printer and print it out tomorrow when you're back in the office or when, you, when you're working from home, print it out. And I want you to evaluate each piece on that blueprint. And I don't want you to change all of them at the same time, but I want you to think about where do you wanna be on this blueprint with each of these components, each of these ingredients in the recipe I'm gonna give you. Where do you wanna be? What's keeping you from getting there? Who do you need in that specific ingredient to help you? And what are your next small action gonna be? Just a small action. You don't have to take massive action. I want you to take massive action eventually, but just what's your next small action gonna be? And if you want, you can scan it and send it back to me. And I will look at it and I will send you an email back. All right, so, and you'll get my details. So, if you go to the trouble and print out your, your blueprint and make some notes on your blueprint, I will have a look at it and I will send you an email back with saying, well done, celebrate with you. Or if there's things that I think you missed, I'll, I'll tell you that as well. All right, so thank you that I can share this from you from this beautiful place. All right, so it is now, 6.30 in the morning here and uh, it is beautiful outside. I actually don't need my Zappos sweater but I love wearing my, my Zappos sweater. And before you listen to the rest of this presentation, I want to do a quick thing with you. So I found out that this weekend I listened to some statistics and we've been about 10% as active as what we usually are in the last eight months because of COVID because of working from home, because of pressure, because of being afraid. And I want to show you just a very quick exercise. Someone taught this to me a few weeks back and it's a life changer. Now, I know it's, it's early for you in the morning, or maybe not that early, 
But for us, by the time we watch this, it's going to be like the end of the day. And I would have sat on my ass for most of the day. Well, I try not to do that, but I would have sat on my ass, ass for most of the day. So I want you to get up from your seat, wherever you're watching from. If, you want, if you're holding your phone, put your phone down. Get up, even if you don't feel like it. Now, you're gonna say, Tom, where did you get this crazy woman that's chasing us up, that's recording from the beach? You know what? I don't care. I don't care if you never watch me again. I don't care if you mail me. Well, I don't care if you mail me. I care that you listen to me now. So please get up from your seats. All right, and you are gonna, and, and this is not gonna hurt. Well, maybe tomorrow, depending on how unfit you are. So <clears throat> I want you to get into a sprint position. So one foot in front of the other foot. And I want you to make your arms like this. Now, we are going to run on the spot like this. Not like this, not like this. Okay, we're going to run on the spot. We're going to keep our arms quite strong. We're going to run on the spot like this. And we're going to do it for, you know, let's, let's just do it for 20 seconds. All right? So get into your position. All right? And let's sprint. Let's sprint. Faster, 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 you can go faster, you can go faster. Faster, 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 faster. Go for it, go for it, go for it. Put all your energy into it. Sprint, 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 sprint. As if you want to win this race. Come on, a little bit more, a little bit more. Well done, all right. And as you can see, I'm getting the benefits of as I would have gone for, a, for an actual run. All right, we're not done yet. Okay, we're gonna do the other side. So I want you to put your other foot in front and just bend your knees comfortably. Get your hands in position, strong hands. You want your hands to be straight. Strong hands and we're gonna do this side. And you ready? You ready? We do a little warm up. Ready, ready and go. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. Come on, come on, you're winning, you're winning. Should be feeling it now. And come on, come on. Last three seconds. And well done. So for the people that got up and did this with me, the rest of my presentation's gonna rock. For the folks that didn't, my presentation might rock just a little bit. So thank you for doing this with me. Thank you for coming to this beautiful place with me in your mind. And I hope that this is giving you a bit of a memory of Africa, if you have not yet been to Africa. Love you and hope to see you someday. Now this blueprint will really help you understand the work that you need to do in order to move your enterprise to be more experience oriented, not only for customers, but for employees. So I'd like to take you on a tour through the blueprint. So in the middle of the blueprint, you see that there is this water line. And very often uh, I find that brands fixate on what's above the water line and sometimes forget what's below the waterline. Or they apply a massive amount of effort on what's above the waterline and not nearly as much effort as what sits below the waterline. So let me take you through this step by step. So first of all, we look at the world of the customer. And we've had many, many customers who have said, but we have personas, we have customer segments but they continue to look at the customer through the lens of their product instead of looking at the customer through the lens of the customer's life. So if you start obsessing about the life of the customer and what their fears and their needs and their wants and their goals are, then you're going to open up so much more room for igniting a new relationship with them that's going to grow your business. So in looking at the world of the employee, we find exactly the same thing. 
we need to look at the goals, the needs, the story and the fears of employees and really obsess about what they need and how they will be successful through working for your brand. So if we take these different viewpoints and we come from a place of empathy, that really opens up a, a whole new way of uh, looking at your business, a whole new way of innovating around your value proposition. Now, the little bottle sitting there in the middle, I, I call that the secret sauce or the perfume of your brand. And many, many brands that are well known across the world that I've had the fortune of interacting with the Ritz Carlton, uh, Zappos, they are very clear about who they are and they've really taken the time and they've distilled the essence of who they are. And they then went further and they put that essence into literally every experience for both employees and for customers. So in looking at your, your essence, there's a lot of business things there around your goals, your purpose, your mission, your vision, your values, your culture, but it's about distilling it in a way that's really clear for people to understand who you are and more importantly, why you exist. So much more demands are being put on leaders to have a purpose-driven vision for their company and to lead with more purpose. So if we look at the different role players that engage with your business, you've got your shareholders, you've got your suppliers, and below the water inside your company, you might think that your employee is functioning by themselves, but they're part of a, a family system. Sometimes they're part of an extended family unit. And it's important to understand that everything in your business and all decisions are really um, driven by emotion. And so much of that is dependent on the quality of the relationships we have. So within your teams, within your leadership teams, there's a lot of expectations. Uh, and often these expectations are formed by a myriad of things. But it's important to be clear and rather than expectations, have agreements between teams. Uh, when we start looking at the journeys, and I'll get into journeys in a moment, but when we start looking at the journeys, very often the journeys break because there's not clear agreements between teams that deliver on the experience. And very often when the experience is bad for the customer, it's usually either a process or a person or a system that didn't deliver what was expected from it. So below these teams, you'll see that there's a whole business design and for customer experience transformation and employee experience transformation to be lasting, to be sustainable, you really need to look at every part of your business. So if we now look at the journeys, both for the customer and the employee, something triggers into that journey and very often we kind of fixate on the processes and the systems but we really need to fast forward to the end of the journey and say what is the outcome we want what do we want the person to say what do we want them to feel when they've had an interaction with us and then we can go and look at the different moments in the journey if I'm a customer, you know, there's a need that gets me into the journey. I then might go and shop for the product or the service I want. I'm going to compare. I'm going to decide. I'm going to buy. I'm going to use. And sometimes the journey breaks when I seek help. When I can't help myself, when I've exhausted my own resources and I engage with the brand and the effort is really high in that moment, we call a moment of truth where I make a decision to say I'm not going to expose myself to the emotions I'm feeling about myself in this moment and I'm not going to expose myself to uh, the effort that I'm applying. It's not worth it. And very often when we look at journeys, we look at it very much in isolation in relation to our product set or, you know, our industry. But 
customers compare across products, across services, across industries. The mind of the customer and the heart of the customer is not segmented in the way that we, we see it. And exactly the same for the employee. So the employee usually goes on a, on a, on a longer journey and now that the way of work is changing and you know they talk about the gig economy uh, an employee might have multiple relationships with brands that they deliver various services to that they invest their time their passion their craft into and we need to open up these journeys and have a look at you know what will the new world of work demand how do we want employees that are currently quite rattled and scared, how do we want them to feel? How do we build up their confidence? How do we make them feel self-assured? How do we design a journey so that they're really proud? And there's moments of celebration where we really celebrate what people have achieved. We put a lot of effort into designing IT systems. We put a lot of effort into designing processes. I'm appealing to you to put the same effort into how we orchestrate and how we, how we design experiences and then how we empower the rest of our organization to deliver on those experiences is really, really key. So if we look at the recipe, so I've given you the kind of the components and, and you know, you you as a brand need to decide what is your aim? What, what do you ultimately want to bake when you put all of these ingredients together? What is it that you want? Do you want a chocolate cake? Do you want a quiche? What, what is the end result of that experience that you want? And then taking the process and the steps here of when you go on, to, on this journey, first of all, you want to enroll your players and your spectators. So really enroll people into where you're going. Take them on the journey with you. Decide who's going to be on this journey with you, who will be close, who will be part of your core team, and really make it uh, an experience for them as well. And understand what's in it for them. What are some of their fears? What are some of their worries? And how will you overcome some of their limiting beliefs and their limiting thinking? The se second step there is around um, discovering your ex both your own experience and that of your competitors. And sometimes even broadening that to looking at people that are on the fringes of your industry. So what's happening with that experience and really evaluating and, and auditing that experience to know how you know, how far is the gap between where I want to be and where I am? Then the third step is around distilling, boiling down who you are and why you are. And usually uh, we have uh, experience essence workshops with people right across an organization, not only the leaders. Something really important that I want to stress today is if you want to vest ownership in people, you have to make space for them to come up with the ideas. You have to make space for them to invent this. Because if you've given birth to an idea, you will want to nurture that idea. You would want to see that idea grow just like a child. So it's really important to engage people across the organization to distill the brand into the essence. This is not only a marketing team that's going to go in isolation and do this. And then the fourth step there, once you've got, you know, the people on board, you've discovered where you are, you know where you want to head to, you know what your essence is, then it's really about reimagining it and discovering novel ways to winning the hearts and the minds of your customers and employees. And just like you would build a house, you need to decide what that reimagination is going to look like for you. Is it a facelift, you know, where we just do cosmetic changes? Is it, you know, I'm just going to extend and build on a room to an existing house? Or is it 
I'm going to break down the pieces that don't serve me anymore. And I'm going to redesign something that's very different. I'm going to redesign something uh, that will future proof my relationships with my customers. I want to build something that's going to revitalize my value proposition. Or maybe in this process, I find that maybe my value proposition is no, no longer relevant to my, to my customers and I need to innovate and come up with something vastly different. So the last piece is really around actualizing it. And I think this is where a lot of brands really struggle. Uh, I have many clients that come to me that say, Chantal, you know, we've, uh, we've been on this journey for a while. We've got lovely, lovely journey maps and the journey maps sometimes they've printed and framed on the walls and, and, and I can see there's really a lot of effort that went into uh, these journey maps, but they remain an artifact on the wall. And I think there's a couple of reasons why they remain an artifact on the wall. Uh, just like, you know, knowing that I need to eat healthy and I need to be active, there's that knowing part and then there's the doing part. And between the knowing and the doing, you know, sometimes the, the motivation isn't there. And sometimes the, the, the vision of the reward isn't there. So what I believe is really important is measuring where you are so that you can use your measurements as a reward. And then there's the aspect of discipline. Uh, you would say, you know, I get up early in the mornings, I get up anything between, you know, four and five in the mornings. And, you know, some mornings I'm wide awake, but some mornings I don't feel like getting up. Now, what do I do in those mornings that I don't feel like getting up? I, I've kind of made a commitment that that would be my morning routine and my health practices and, and my writing. So the mornings when I don't feel like it, I apply discipline, I apply rigor, and just like that rigor to get anything in life, to achieve anything in life, it's really important that that rigor is applied to your customer experience programs, that that rigor is applied to your journey. So once you've got a journey, and once you have a good idea what's gonna enable and what's gonna activate that journey, you need to apply project management disciplines to get stuff done. And just like you enroll people at the start, there's a continuous enrollment to take people on this journey to get this done. The worst thing that you can do as a CX leader or as a, someone really passionate about making a change in their organization is to think that you can do it alone. I wanna say that you, you can't. You can't, I've tried and there's, you can't do this alone. So a lot of your skill and a lot of your own motivation needs to focus on who do I need to have on this journey with me that's going to help me make this happen, that's going to help me achieve this goal and that's going to help celebrate, that's going to celebrate with me once we've achieved this. The last thing I want to talk about in actualization, a lot of people have you know, very large call centers uh, that are distributed um, and the scale of the people activation part often really scares my clients. You know, when they've got 2,000 people in a, in a, in a call center, the, the logistics of, you know, igniting uh, passion around uh, the essence or building the skills because often in order to achieve a better customer experience, you need to upgrade people skills. And, you know, we often refer to interpersonal skills, soft skills. I call them super skills because I think there's um, magic that happens when you upgrade some, someone's ability to communicate, when you teach someone empathy, when you teach them uh, listening, you know, when you teach them uh, like Lou Carbone says, clue scanning. So many times in conversations, I find myself drifting off and thinking about things that need to be done. And then I bring myself back and I go, I'm an inv investigative reporter. I'm clue scanning. What does the person across from me need right now? 
They need me to really pay attention to them and give them love in that moment. And that enables me to do really powerful clue scanning um, so that I can sometimes interrupt, uh, disrupt people's thinking about themselves because I know things and I remember things. So these super skills are, are really important. And aside from just process work, some technology work, um, changing our way of doing things, there's also this foundational skills upgrade that I believe will naturally make experiences better. So that is the, the ingredients that I wanted to share with you today, as well as the recipe. And you will get a copy of this experience oriented uh, enterprise uh, blueprint. And I would be delighted if you have questions, if you want to talk to us about, you know, the aspects of this and, and we would be happy to share more case studies with you. So thank you for uh, sticking with this talk. I really love sharing this with you. And I, I really hope that this empowers you to identify some areas that you, that you would like to work on next. So once you've got the blueprint, uh, you know, go and circle the areas where you think you want to do work next and, and, and go and have a look at the ingredients of this with an evaluative mind where you look at, you know, where am I now, honestly? Um, and, and be honest with yourself. Where are you now and where do you want to get to? And what are some of the things that's going to stop you? And what are some of the things that's going to just give you wings? So thank you. It has been my pleasure. And I will take some questions.